Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Pastor Jeremy. I am checking in for my second official Wednesday night devotion, so I'm glad that you are uh, tuning in, whether it's on Wednesday night or Thursday, whenever you may be finding us. Uh, I am still working on figuring out a rhythm, and uh, I'm in my office today, and it started storming, so we have some thunder behind us. Um, you may be able to hear that. I think the storm's going to pass through pretty quickly, but wanted to go ahead and get this started. Uh, so I uh, wanted to uh, talk just a little bit about some of the things that are happening in this transition period. Um, eventually, I, hopefully, I can quit talking about COVID, but it obviously has made for a, an interesting start here um, with my time in Williamsburg. Uh, my daughter Crosley tested positive on Sunday morning, so uh, she is the last of the house to test positive, which means that um, by the end of the week, uh, we will all be out of the official quarantine period. Uh, the kids will still need to mask up for a little bit, but we are looking forward to getting to know everyone. One of the things that's been really uh, hard is uh, my goals for the first few weeks had to kind of be pushed back. And so I just want to talk to you about some of the things that uh, I'm wanting to do. Uh, you know, sometimes we get questions about, you know, what are your plans for, for your time here? Or what do you think we should be doing? And I, I don't know how to answer that because I've not been with you all long enough. Um, especially for the next few weeks, certainly after that time. Um, but my goal is to meet with as many of you as possible, to hear your story, um, to get to know just a little bit, um, maybe uh, learn some things about the community. And so uh, I don't have a, a list of like, here's every person that I'm reaching out to or anything like that. Um, if you'd like to meet together, I'd love to do so. Uh, I have a, uh, an email address here at the church now. It's jshannon fbcw at gmail.com um, then you can also find my cell phone information posted a few different places uh, or you can call to the church office and um, talk to Rebecca and she can kind of connect us if possible but uh, I'd love you know uh, I'm going to be in the office kind of irregularly for the next few weeks um, the best practice in general will always be just to call ahead of time um, if we have a scheduled meeting that's great um, but if you're just thinking about popping in, I'd love to talk to you, but um, you might just want to double check to make sure that I'm here. Um, we are trying to finish getting set up and um, being out and about and have a few things going on. But please, um, my goal, my desire is I want to, to learn as much as I can about Williamsburg, uh, about you all, about your stories, and uh, getting a chance to just make that connection. So please, please, please know I'd love to reach out. If you do not hear from me, please reach out. Um, I want to know more about y'all and get to talk. And so uh, that's probably the biggest thing I wanted to share with the transition period. Uh, I thank you all for your continued patience. Um, we are we are getting there. Uh, my wife Jenny is now finally getting to be in her classroom. Many of y'all have asked about that. And so um, there's a lot of work to do to get ready for the school year, but um, we're, we're ready for this transition and things are going well. Tonight, um, I want to uh, spend some time looking at a passage in Acts that you are undoubtedly familiar with. Um, it is one that is used often to talk about the role of the church and, and what it can look like. And so I want to spend some time in Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 42 through 47. Uh, for right now, these Wednesday night devotions, I want to keep somewhat short. Um, that's always a relative term. I want to keep them on the shorter end, um, but maybe use those just to communicate some, some more things that I'd like to have out in the open as we begin this journey together. I am, I am partnering with you in your journey uh, the things that God has been doing in this community, in this church for, for a long time. Um, but as we kind of get started together, um, there's some things I want to talk about. And so uh, the passage that I want to use is Acts uh, 2, verses 42 through 47. And I am trying to figure out my technology, so you have to excuse me um, as we do this. I am uh, not connected to the church printer, and so my notes are on the computer and so is the camera recording and so I am uh, a little more scattered than I would typically be um, but it's Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 47 um, it's often known as the fellowship of believers and so um, this is what it says it says they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the gospel by the apostles all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. 
And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. When I read this passage, um, it's it's the standard that people um, often hope for for a church. And so I, I don't know if you hear it as much now, but you hear a lot of folks say, we want to be a New Testament church and we want to get back to doing the things that they were doing in the New Testament. And, and usually this is the passage that everybody goes to because you see a lot of the core things that a church is called to do together. Uh, teaching, uh, for preaching, fellowship, uh, miracles were happening. They were seeing all of these wonderful signs and wonders. Uh, people were sharing what they had. Uh, people had what they needed. There were people who were going without because they were taking care of each other. Uh, they met together in the temple courts daily, and it says the Lord was adding to their numbers. Uh, this is an, an interesting passage because uh, it is what we are hoping to see happen uh, in our own way and the unique way that God is calling us to. But it's also one that is rarely achieved to that standard. Um, it is a glimpse. It is a, a short portion, portion of, of what is happening. Even on this particular page, you see just this small glimpse of when everything was going perfectly in the church. These are the things that we see occurring but you know, and I know, that the best glimpses are often not the most realistic for what we are able to expect. Um, our lives are messy. There's a lot of excitement coming in as a, as a new pastor, and, and hopefully there's excitement in the community about all the things that can be. And it may be that we read something like Acts 2 and say, that is who we want to be. But we also have to be realistic and say, we need to know who we are right now. Uh, I think it was pastor, author Leonard Sweet, um, but he said something along the lines of, you know, if the Apostle Paul were around today, many of our churches would be getting a letter. And we know that in most of those letters, uh, it's talking about the things that, that need work. There were disputes, there were frustrations, there were things going on um, that needed to be addressed. There was these questions about identity and who they are in Christ and how that ties into their old way of living and what's being demanded in light of this new savior. But there's all of these things that are happening. And most of the rest of the letters, I think, um, give a better glimpse of what church life can look like. And so the reason I share this is I don't want to lower expectations. I don't want you to not be excited about transitions. And I don't want us to, to say, well, things are never going to be as they see are seen in Acts 2. But I think we have a tendency with church life sometimes to talk about ourselves as if we are always executing at that whole standard. When in reality, even in Acts 2, 42 through 47, you're seeing a glorified example of the best moment. This may have just been a snapshot of what is going on. Uh, if you're watching this, you are involved in social media on some level. Uh, some may be watching it on YouTube, but my suspicion is most of you are watching it on Facebook and uh, you may be uh, rotating between this devotion and seeing things that people are posting or you may have shared something yourselves. And uh, one of the struggles we see in an age of social media is that um, it is even harder uh, to be honest about what's going on in our lives because we are comparing ourselves to everyone's best moments. Uh, we are seeing standards by people who have catered ads and targeted things that are telling us, this is what your life needs to look like. And any time that we don't measure up, we start to think that something is wrong with us. Now, I will say we're broken people, right? We have our issues. I am not a, a perfect person by any means. And so the more that we're able to own the mess that we see in our lives, the better we are able to work towards the standard that we see uh, in somewhere like Acts chapter 2. My hopes for this congregation is that we can live in the tension of saying, you know, this might not be where we are, but this is where we would like to be. It isn't telling everyone, come to our church because we figured it all out. We say, come to our church because we're figuring it out. Come to this fellowship together because we need the accountability of meeting together and to try to do these things. And we may use Acts chapter 2 as an example of what that might look like, but instead of talking about a perfect church, I want to share this quote from Eugene Peterson in his book, Under the Predictable Plant. Eugene Peterson has been one of the most transformative people in my understanding of ministry. And he says this, he says, on close examination, though, it turns out that there are no wonderful congregations. Hang around long enough, and sure enough, there are gossips who won't shut up, furnaces that malfunction, sermons that misfire, disciples who quit, choirs that go flat, and worse, 
every congregation is a congregation of sinners. And as if that weren't bad enough, they all have sinners for pastors. So your new pastor is a sinner. Uh, I, I love every person that I've got a chance to meet, and I'm very impressed, but we understand that every person who gathers at First Baptist Church of Williamsburg is a sinner, and we are all gathered together because we need each other. Uh, when we own a realistic understanding of our story, we see the places where we can grow. When we are willing to admit that we don't have it all together, we are paving the way for those who also don't have it together to feel like they are having a place where they can join. They're not coming to be with a bunch of perfect people so that they can learn how to be perfect. When people join with us, they're coming as imperfect people, coming alongside other imperfect people as we navigate our stories together. We are at the early stages of our journey together. I am joining in the work that God is already doing uh, through you and has done through this congregation for years. But going forward, we must give ourselves the grace to know that we ultimately are not responsible for the outcomes, but for our faithfulness. We can't control how many people show up or don't show up. We can't control so many factors because those things are ultimately not in our control. What we can do is strive to reach a standard that we see in a perfect glimpse of here. Now, in Acts chapter 2, we see they devoted themselves to teaching and fellowship and breaking bed and prayer, and they sold property and possessions and did all these things. But it doesn't say, and because they did all of these things, they were guaranteed a result. Even as they were being faithful, it is not their hard work that produced the outcome. It says in verse 47 that the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. We are not in control of the outcome. We are only in control of our faithfulness. We can only be faithful to trying to do these things that we believe is how the Spirit works in us and shapes us and transforms us. But ultimately, the success, the, the growth that we see in our lives, that we see in our church's lives, and they see in the lives of our community is still only going to be based on God's goodness. And so we aim to be like the church in Acts chapter 2. But here's something we have to remember. The church in Acts chapter 2 also had problems. This is a standard. This was them telling the best side of themselves. But I would guess that as they gathered together in the temple courts, as they were breaking bread, and as they were having fellowship, they would have disruption. And they would have frustration. And I'm sure they were talking about each other. And did you hear what so-and-so said? And there were things that were happening. And it's not because they were awful people. It's because they were sinners. Because they were real people trying to understand this transformative thing that had happened. This new identity they had found in this person of Jesus. And, and forsaking all that they knew before. And so in Acts chapter 2, we see a standard. It is something to ascribe. It is something to, to work towards. And that is something that we are called to do. At the end of most services, you will hear me extend the hand of fellowship. And I often will say, and I'm bad about saying things exactly the same way week to week, but it basically will say that if you partner with us, what we are encouraging each other to do as the people of God is that we, we serve together and we cry together and we laugh together and we study together and we eat together and we play together and pray together and sing together. And as we do all of these things together... We believe that we are growing in our understanding and our relationship with God. And the more that we do that together, the stronger and more equipped we are to go out into the world. Even the church in Acts chapter 2 had issues. We just got a chance to see them on their best day. There will be moments in our lives where people will see the very best in us. And we thank God for that because it is a testimony to God's ability to work, God's faithfulness in the midst of our mess. But when you look around and you start to say, well, I don't know if we're doing all those things, um, it's okay. Uh, it's not okay to say, well, that, that's never going to be like that and it'll never be good and we'll never figure it out. But when our understanding of church is that we are trying to figure out in the midst of this mess together, then we handle it with a new version of grace. We are all walking in this together because we need each other and because we are growing together. And so... I hope that there's a Sunday where we gather and we say, you know what, when I read Acts chapter 2, I think we're getting pretty close. But if we see that we're not always getting it together, just read some of the other texts. Read uh, Galatians and Ephesians and read Colossians and read all of these things that were happening and realize that even the struggles that we will face together are normal and they are necessary. And so I mentioned in the next couple of weeks, my goal is to get to know you all better. 
Uh, I want to know the, the highs and the lows and your dreams and your fears and get an understanding, but I hope we reach the trust level to say, we are here because we need each other and we are walking along beside each other as faithfully as we can, trusting that God will do what God does, that the Lord will add faithfully in the ways that God sees fit. And then when we see that, we can celebrate together. I hope to see you all this coming Sunday uh, for worship. We are having uh, a special time at the beginning of the service, the blessing of the backpacks. This is open to um, to all, any person who feels uh, like they would benefit from this. But this is uh, not just for our school-age children. This is for college students, for our uh, educators for whether it's professors at the, at the college at the university whether it is our, our our teachers at the many schools around us um, if you uh, know someone who you would like to be praying over during this time it'll be a chance to do so and so uh, we've asked people to bring their backpacks or my wife said well I don't have a backpack because I'm a teacher so bring your work bag bring something that you believe is is, is a tangible something you can place there and we're going to pray together and we're going to celebrate together um, beginning of this school year and so uh, if you see me out in public, please say hello. If, if I, I don't recognize you at first, I apologize. We're going to learn and figure this out. But I, I'm looking forward to getting to know you. I'm trying to figure out how to be an Acts 2 church, realizing that most days we might be more like some of the other uh, letters that we see. Um, but being able to embrace that and, and to uh, be real with each other and to see that going forward. So I hope that you have a, a great night, a great week, wherever you are. And I hope to see you soon.